Welcome, residents, to Dr. DC Podcast. My name is producer Richard, and across from me is the doctor himself. Hello. Each week, we talk about the weird and wonderful world of DC Wetfield and questions from listeners like you. Are you all right? (laughs) (laughs) I'm having a stroke. (laughs) I haven't played with it in a while, and I was like, yeah, I feel like this is happening right now. (laughs) You know, if you do, and look, I didn't, I didn't fucking look at anything. That was all me, baby. Crowdy. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Not like this. Papa. Papa. (laughs) Proud. (laughs) Day two of Fanstravaganza. Yeah, it's our, like, like fun Fanagar, like, week-long episodes every day. What? What What is this, Docmas? In June. Yeah. Christmas in, in June. (sighs) <sighs> June, June, June miss, June miss, and in. in <laughs> <laughs> it's too much to try to think of. Uh, yeah, this is day two. It's a Monday, and you got a new episode. Lucky you. Oh God! Now, now you don't have to say like, oh Mondays. Yeah, now you can say like, ugh Mondays. I got a case of the Mondays. Yeah, Doctor DC's here. Yeah, I got twenty four of them right here. <laughs> if I ever started a brewery, I would make a beer called Monday, so people could say I've got a case of the, the Mondays. Mondays, and that's the Jesus whole marketing campaign. Christ, that's a genius yeah. idea. Yeah, I might have to delete that from the like podcast. your cool your boss texts and just says like case of the Mondays, and you go, I'll be right there. Oh my then, god, just the ad for that? Yeah, right. You love it. Oh man, you're welcome. I might have to pitch that to one of my clients. <laughs> Uh, I believe I get a 10% steak now. <laughs> sure, I'll give you 10% meat. <laughs> 10% of a steak. Yeah. That's what I wanted. I yeah. want 10% of a steak. <laughs> oh, uh, man. I made some lamb chops last night, and they were so good. Do you fuck with lamb? I do. I I also eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I knew you had sex with sheep, but... Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, the, the, it's the chops that are usually like the, it's the, the, the ribs that are always more expensive, but they'll like, yeah. just the like steak, steak boys. Those are, yeah, those yeah. are always really affordable. Oh man. Love it's, lamb. Oh my God. I had so much of it last night. So, so good. Goddamn good. Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, we want to get into some questions? <laughs> Let's do it. We went back to the mailbag. We found questions that we hadn't answered, and so we're finally getting to it. So if you're still listening, your Why? patience has paid off. What's wrong with you? What? You don't got nothing else to do? Why are you still listening? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> people with nothing else to do is like our entire audience. You cannot, oh, yeah. we cannot alienate oh, people no. with nothing else to do. Oh, no. I mean, that's not the reason why we do this podcast. Because we have nothing else That's to right. do. That's right, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're alienating us. Welcome, sisters I'm and brothers. I'm fading out of this reality. Was it Bleach Boy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Sure looks like it. I'm so glad we record these in order. <laughs> sure looks like Bleach Boy got you. Because <laughs> I'm white? No, because you're covered in <laughs> color. <sighs> told you I had a previous appointment before I came over here. <laughs> <laughs> First question comes from Facebook. Go to the face and the book. Go to the Facebook. Yeah, but I went right to the face. Uh, First question comes from, oh, speaking of, Josh Gill. Ah, sexy Gill. I'd like to bleach that point. Oh, come on. <laughs> Gonna make him disappear right from existence. I mean, what? <laughs> he, he knows what it means. <laughs> Josh asks. Ten bucks says he doesn't. <laughs> Ten bucks can go a long way with Josh. <laughs> Good lord! I gotta say, before we recorded this, oh yeah, saw a video of Josh doing a deadlift. Oh my god! I've stopped myself from asking him how much longer until he can deadlift as much as Half Thor. But uh, <laughs> I, but I'm thinking about it. I mean, I knew that you've been dealing with with hunger issues. I didn't realize you were so thirsty too. <laughs> Josh asks, what are Poison Ivy's thoughts on the legalization of marijuana? I mean... She's pro. Obviously pro. Moving on. Although... I mean, you're smoking it. You're destroying the plants. Well, so here's the thing, though. Yeah. I think generally, pro. However, she did have a bad experience with the Floronic Man in a, a story from the 70s or 80s called Reefer Madness in which the Floronic Man sort of controlling Poison Ivy, uh, 
decides he's going to flood Gotham with like cheap weed <laughs> and hook everyone because that's how weed works. Jesus. Uh, and the, just weed made of him. Yeah, highly cause addictive. Because he's, yeah. he's the floronic. Man. Yeah. And, 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 and she's sort of under his thumb during that time. So now I don't know if that has left like a lingering disdain for weed. Yeah. Like in, I get in, that. in her. That makes sense. That it's like a bad memory th- that she associates with that now. Uh, I mean, the general principle about something that is uh, like cheap and effective, you could make clothing out of it. It's uh, like used medicinally. It's good for pain. It's yeah, good for stress. Yeah. Like the general idea of the benefits of plants, Poison Ivy is totally behind. I would be curious about whether or not the events of Reefer Madness and her experience with Jason Woodrew, the Floronic Man, have like soured her on that specific thing. Uh, she would try to try to design a new plant that essentially did the same thing, but that she didn't have to like think about it. Yes. You know? Do you think that, um, like, do you think she's a vegetarian or she only eat meat? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, it, the depiction of poison ivy sometimes gets a little bit blurry where like someone like cuts down a tree and she goes, you monster. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I don't, I, I think when the when Poison Ivy makes sense, when people are writing her well, it's closer to the idea of the green and that there's a cycle to mm. uh, to things. Now, Poison Ivy tends to be more on the side of plants at the expense of other things. Yes. But I think she also generally understands, like, that's just not going to happen. Yeah. So that idea of balance i think i think poison ivy is fine with the idea of for example eating plants being vegetarian but the thing that would get her uh, angry would be things like monocultures clear cutting uh you know like the, like the way maybe we do senseless, agriculture and things yeah, like that senseless destruction of like like pollution things like that it, th- those th- or you know like just like eating an onion, but not putting the base pick in water to grow it again. Like just not being wow. smart. Like I think she'd have a problem with the methods as opposed to like the specific thing about eating plants. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, great PSA there. If you, if you, if you're not, if, if you're you not doing an that onion, with, if you're not doing that with green onions, you're a fool. Yeah. Sure. Uh, that that's, you're just, you're just throwing money. Green onions are so expensive. Same thing at the with grocery the avocado store. pit, you know, really you know, the avocado pit and you put the, the uh, uh, toothpicks through it, put it over your glass of water, let I, the roots grow out. You can that's not start a, growing an avocado plant. In the up here? Well, not here. We oh, can't grow okay. anything up I here. I was just like, what? Like, I just mean generally. Because here you can grow green onions. Yeah, we got li- we got listeners all over the world, baby. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That really came out of nowhere. I'm surprised that Kevin Smith hasn't written like a, a marijuana based like yeah like green poison comic. Ivy, but his would just be like poison ivy likes to toke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Like oh, and then he, then she made like the end, biggest end, blunt ever. End of idea. Yeah. <laughs> I, really, I used to really like Kevin Smith. I, I mean, I think I still do. I like him as I, a person. But it's the, oh, I de- definitely. Yeah. But I think he's one of those. As creatively, I think I gotta leave him in the past. I, I have fond memories, like him finding marijuana, watching, like think, watching things like I still think Dogma is hilarious. But it's like great. watching things like Mallrats and Clerks, that was formative. Is like I was getting into like yeah. non huge studio cinema and For stuff sure. like that. I. It's important, but it's that museum piece thing. It's like, I'll always remember Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns, and we'll just leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> like, but I think that, like, Tusk was good. Red State's great. Like, there was a couple, yeah. like, years there after he tried pot that I was like, hey, he's doing the whole, like, experimental pot yeah. kind of stuff. And then he just got into, like, the, he, he went backwards. He went from, like, like, sort of psychological, yeah. esoteric into, like, this, like fourteen year old who's trying pot for the first time and just wants to watch like uh, uh, fart jokes and stuff. Yeah, it's true. It's he's, very he's strange. Like, he's like he's like marrow marijuana Benjamin Buttoning. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's enough steps to get to that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's why you're here. Convoluted jokes, baby. Baby. <laughs> uh, all right. Next question comes from Adam Upper. I hardly know her. It's disgusting. So is Bleach Boy. We still put that out. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, shit. You cut it? You edited it? I bleached it. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) 
Adam asks, this is what happens when we do back-to-back episodes. <laughs> it's all one to me. Good God. Uh, Adam asks, uh, for me, one of the biggest misconceptions for comics is that they're just for children. While I think that was once the case, but it isn't anymore, you guys agree or disagree? Now nah, it's for fucking babies. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just you guys are all babies. Yeah, kick dork. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, do you, do you think that that I mean, just with how prevalent superhero movies and the like MCU and all that kind of stuff is now, do you think that that misconception is still out there that that comic books themselves are childish? I mean, I I think maybe in the perspective of if you started dating someone and you went to their house and then you saw a bookcase full of like novels, you'd be like, wow, this person reads. But if you went to their house and you saw like a bunch of long boxes, you might think it was cool, but I don't know that you would think like, wow, this person is well read. No, what I you know think, what I, I think, like, you it, know what I mean? I think definitely the childish thing doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. What I do think though, is that there is a sort of like, there's like adolescence or youth attached to it for sure. Sure. Uh, but more importantly, I think it's like, dorkiness is still attached to it well yeah i mean that's not going anywhere like i a great example is like when i think about like guests for this podcast right and like who i would ask often what i have to do is go like is they are they gonna think this is lame or like because right. a lot of people who like nerdy stuff still don't read comics and i think that's like right there's still like an extra level between and we've talked about it before that the viewership of those mcu movies has not really uh, in, a, in a meaningful way translated no. to the sale of comics no maybe to the sale of the odd trade or things specific to a story but not to comics in general no i i feel like i feel like there's still a little bit of like a like a dorkiness stigma against it it hasn't been sort right. of like propped up as like literature yet which is funny because i feel like i mean we that era of like late 80s early 90s you know the vertigo heyday I feel like like that was the shot, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, um I, I mean there's a lot of great indep- independent non-superhero stuff out there, but I feel like it's mostly people who at least started reading superhero stuff that then found that. I don't know that there's too many people that just go from books to graphic novels without the intermediary superhero step. No, I, I feel like there's lots of people that abandon the superhero genre for those things. Yeah, and I understand. And sometimes that. come back, like and Jordan Morris. Come, we talked to him, and it, yeah. it's sort or, of, or you know, or Kyle, right? You know, yeah, he started yeah. on superhero stuff, but he's just looking for something more sophisticated. Goes over to things like Vertigo and non superhero y things. Dips back in once in a while, you know, when something's good. When I feel like in sort of the late like 80s into the late 90s, that's when we started getting sort of the like taking superheroes and making them more mature and like giving sort of these more interesting storylines yeah i it's yeah it's true it's that's it's interesting that way i mean i think it works a little bit the way tv works though too right which is the main titles are your like your network shows they've got a ton of episodes and they do a ton of seasons and they just keep going until no one wants them anymore like there's no they won't say like well we're only going to do two seasons and be like well people want more we're just going to do more that's that's your Batman. That's your Superman. That doesn't mean that in those things aren't good stories or interesting writing or anything like that. But yeah. the end game is different, right? They're just they're the end game is perpetuity as much as possible. Yeah. Whereas you get things like Tom King's Mr. Miracle or you get uh you, you know like that Liam Sharp uh like Brave and the Bold with Batman and Wonder Woman or you get these like little the 6 12 issue mini series like or maxi series as you call them or whatever those ones are tend to be the ones where it's like boom and then it gets on like the new york times list and they're like wow who knew that superheroes were so interesting but it's because that's more like british tv or like cable tv where it's like we got one good season's worth of story we're gonna tell it the way we want to tell it and then we're backing off yeah and i sort of feel like that's the thing right so I think when people think of comic books in general, they're thinking of the in perpetuity, the serial, like they're thinking of, do you read Batman? Yeah. 
and not necessarily taking into account, I mean, certainly not taking into account indie stuff. No. But also not taking into account those things where it's like, oh, I wrote a six issue Constantine, you know, thing or what, or whatever, you know, Swamp Thing miniseries, uh, blah, blah, blah. Do you think that, here, do you think the perspective gets worse or better if you start reading more like, in these stuff though because part of me is also like does that get does that, does that make it worse to to, to like outsiders sometimes oh, right. too? Does, does that also further infantilize yeah. like the superhero stuff i mean i think it's, i mean part of it is it just comes down to taste there's indie stuff that's crap too yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what i mean just yeah it's it just depends what you're reading, what your taste is i think if you're the sort of person that maybe gets tired of the sort of corporate feel of some of those superhero things then you're more inclined to see the literary value in the non-corporate stuff yeah but that doesn't in reality mean that the corporate stuff is lacking literary value sometimes it does yeah but not necessarily so i i I think even within the comic reader world there are these misconceptions a little bit of that for sure i think i agree with you though that i i think we're sort of done with the idea of comics just being childish definitely dorky maybe not necessarily like oh wow you read a lot you know like no one's no, gonna say that no no, like, no 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 you know what i mean like they're never gonna think of it the way you think of like of mice and men or yeah. like something like that but, nobody nobody sees them as like just for kids anymore and i if anything i think that people may be like is there comics for kids anymore well i mean it's certainly i would argue way harder to find comics for kids yeah cars for if kids you're, though, if, I mean, if you're not doing like back issues like finding silver age stuff if you're just looking for new comics there's a few things, but like it is not the, the predominant thing. No. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, let's go to the next question, which we're let's leaving Facebook. Oh, we're going over to Twitter. That's Twitter. <laughs> okay. Uh, next question comes from Raging G. I'm hard as a rock. Raging G. All the good sites are locked. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Preach. <laughs> Just want to look at a nurse once. <laughs> yeah, you haven't been able to get into your Mr. Skin Pro account for days. <laughs> Mr. Skin. You love bringing that up. It's because, I don't know, something about just how it rolls off the tongue. I think it's like the funniest it's such like a like it, a it, vintage reference now because it's like imagine how early you had to be in the game to get that domain. Didn't you say that in that Gabrus episode? I feel like you no, brought. No, I said it in because uh, I you 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 broke someone it, down I from saying it, that. No, I said it with a guest though, but it wasn't Gabrus. It, it was somebody that you. It was more recent surprised. than that. It was with Connor. or kyle or yeah i think it might have been connor like yeah that, yeah that's really funny uh it's, it, i i just it's the thing that it, it would be like getting porn.com it's like <laughs> you have to be so early in like be like the internet exists i need to make this thing it's like, like <laughs> so fun that's the thing i find the funniest about it i think <laughs> just like you jumped on that bandwagon so quickly yeah but it's also such a vintage porn reference yeah, really, because it's like it. The language feels outdated. Does that even? It's, say, it's like saying like skin flick or something. like it feels like. Does it even still exist? I I, I don't know. Does it? I mean, you're the one with the account. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's just the only place I can get those 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 classics. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it's the uh, what's it? Uh, what's the when the when they bring the the movies to like the like the all the classic movies get. <laughs> Turner Classic movies? No, no, the uh, Turner Classic skin flicks. It's when they re-release movies and like the the super special editions. Oh right, yeah, yeah, like remaster. Uh, yeah, but there's like a specific like movies that get brought into this like criteria. Yeah, it's the Criterion of porn. There must be a Pornterian <laughs> Criterion porn <laughs> collection or something. Yeah, yeah. a Pornterian Criterion collection. top collection yeah. or whatever. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Raging G asks. <laughs> Uh, uh, in DCUO, the the basic plot was that Lex killed everyone and Brainiac came and took over the world, forcing Lex to go back in time and throw a drug at a drug that will awaken any metagene in mankind, creating a planet of superheroes. How would a world like this function in mainline DC? Uh, right. 
that's not a hundred percent true. So DCUO is the DC Universe Online, that big MMORPG of DC. I thought that's what that was, yeah. The opening cinematic of that game is this insane battle between basically the like secret society of supervillains and the Justice League. And it like opens on the like, Green Arrow's body. Like this is like the final battle. Yeah. It's sort of you're seeing Giganta and Black Adam yeah. and Green Lantern and Flash and everyone is there. It's it's crazy. Yeah. And at the climax of this battle, the vil- the tide turns, the villains basically start winning. Superman shows back up. He had been recharging in the sun because he had been drained from constant battle. Uh, he shows up to defeat Luthor, and Luthor has stuffed Wonder Woman with kryptonite. Jesus. Which is pretty fucked up, and it's sort of like a trap for Superman, and then Luthor kills him. Uh, he kills Superman in the opening cinematic of this game. Wow. And then the Luthor, like, narration kicks overhead and he said we were so busy fighting ourselves we didn't see the true threat and you see all these brainiac ships in the sky with all the heroes gone Jeez. brainiac takes over and luthor basically goes back in time with brainiacs like nanites that had been collecting the powers of earth's heroes yeah. and he just releases them into the atmosphere which is the game's conceit of how do you just make a new character and insert yourself into this world is that these nanites bestow powers on just a like thousands of new people and it now it's up to the secret society and the justice league to recruit and train these people to fight mm. brainiac okay uh have you ever seen that opening cinematic no. do you want to just watch it right now sure it's yeah it's kind of badass actually that's basically it yeah, that sounds cool yeah so that's the basic premise, right? Is that the villains win and it leaves the earth defenseless. And so then Luthor has to go back in time. And basically he, he basically, it's like a, a different version of like the gene bomb. He's basically yeah. releasing these nanites that bestow powers to people. So the question is, how do we think in the comics that would unfold like as an event, if we just all of a sudden had like thousands of people just got powers out of the blue? Well, I I think that um, there's a very a, a, a similar thing that happens in Kingdom Come. Um, I suppose, yeah. Where the the the, the, the amount of people that have yeah. uh, ability sort of ra- ratchets up, and so you're yeah. dealing with these worlds where like there's tons of yeah. superpowered people. That's true, and it certainly causes issues there. I mean, and it's not the first time DC has you know done invasion had the gene bomb. There's a yeah. lot of people that got powers from that. Yeah. Um there's the um the the Bang Babies in uh, Milestone comics like where Static and uh, Icon and that uh like um there's that fortunate idea. name but <laughs> yeah. Um it's certainly not the first time they talk about it and even just the idea of Is the Is that Medici. like the prequel like animated series from the Bang Bros? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah bang babies getting inside of a van and finding girls bang. oh no oh no <laughs> hi-ho do you need a ride <laughs> uh. <laughs> hi oh oh no uh yeah I, I mean it's it's certainly not the first time that dc's dealt with it i think if they did a new one I mean, there's versions like the Speed Force Storm at the start of the the Rebirth run of the Flash. Yeah, briefly gave the Speed Force to like hundreds of people in Central City. Jeez, uh, until Godspeed essentially like killed them all. But you know, like there are versions of that thing that DC cycles back to a lot. Um, and so it wouldn't surprise me if they came back to something like that, probably on a smaller scale, maybe not as a big, you know, universe wide event, but like in someone's book, you know, like that was even a thing in, in Batman in Snyder's Batman. When Gordon was Batman, Mr. Bloom was giving these little like seeds that would basically bestow powers on people. Oh, the wow. idea of like gifting powers or an explosion of people of, with powers or stuff like that. That's an idea that comes back in DC a lot. So I wouldn't be surprised to see it again. 
no i, I mean that, that's it that seems like an easy sort of like story element yeah. to put into those right yeah definitely um but yeah it's definitely the trick with this one is it's like the race to like who gets these people first do we train them for good or, do we train them for bad yeah. that's like where the conflict where the interesting storytelling is and like and to what end do right? you get to be a villain in dcuo yeah is it which one do you prefer um it, they're ju- it's just different yeah you know because you get to pick your powers you also get to pick your movement class so you either are f- you can fly or you're acrobatic or you have the speed force oh okay and then you get and depending on which powers actually you you just get to pick your mentor it doesn't actually matter which powers you pick so oh, okay. you you could for the justice league it's superman batman wonder woman yeah and then you go on different missions accordingly or for the villains, it's Luthor, Joker, and Circe. Oh, wow. Circe, that's a random. Uh, well, it's sort of meant to be like the flip. Yeah. Right? Oh, I see. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's just different, right? You just get different missions, essentially, to, and stuff like that. So it's. I think it makes sense. I think most people play with multiple characters because then try with different powers, uh, with a different mentor, new missions. I'm a villain this time. That's it, awesome. Yeah. It's, it sounds like a fun game. It is. It is. I haven't yeah. played it in a while, but it was a good time. Uh, all right. Uh, next question. I normally don't want that pigeon, but this one I do. It's Ryan Pigeon. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke for literally two people. Uh, I, I, that's arguable. Kyle thought it was funny, I think. Did he? Uh, no, he made fun of me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ryan asks, what do you guys think of Tim Drake's new name and costume? Right. So this is in Young Justice. Yeah. Tim Drake has abandoned. Is like this Red the, Robin? No, no, no. He's abandoned all that. He now wears a sort of brown and yellow and white costume and he goes by Drake. Oh. Not just, I mean, the, the thing that's sort of weird is that it's also his real name, but a Drake is like a duck. So yeah. he's like a different bird theme now. Yeah, I mean, he's, he mostly, ju- and he just watches over Toronto. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 616 is, is like. We definitely made this joke. With, there's no way I didn't, yeah. I feel like I made a bat signal bling or something. I think yeah. I feel like, yeah. Um, yeah, what do we think about it? Have you seen that new costume? No, I have not. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll take a look. It's brown and white and yellow. I actually, a lot of people think it looks, they're like, oh, it's stupid. It looks ugly. I mean, it, it it certainly looks less clean than any of his Red Robin stuff did, but I don't dislike it. And I like the idea of him stepping out of be, just being like, I think we talked about it. Like, Red Robin feels like he's still got a foot in the door. Like, he's like, go on, have another Robin. But like, seriously, like, don't like, I, can I come back anytime I want? I sort of like the idea of him having Is it this one. Yep. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. I don't dislike it. I no. think it's fine. And again, I like the idea of him having his own moniker that he's not just like a variation on a Robin. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I know Red Robin was around for a long time and like I dug that too. I didn't dislike it, but I like this. I think it's a little weird that he It's the he, same he name. He can't even just go by like Mallard or like just yeah. like anything. He has to like literally use his last name. I mean, it's fine. It's not the end of the world, and I certainly didn't have the strong opinions about it that some people did. I do think it's a we could have put this much more work into a new name for him. <laughs> like, I, I do like the idea of Mallard because then he can like bash through the wall and be like, "Did someone call a doctor?" Because I'm a quack. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, and then he botches their surgery. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I I do like that. Yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah. There's there's a lot of other fucking birds that you could choose. Like, why not? I yeah. I just I feel. I do feel a little bit like we just didn't put quite enough energy into new name. Yeah. Because it's just like, who is this Drake? Couldn't have been that. Couldn't have been old Tim Drake. You know, like I the, haven't the, gone by that name in Cardinal, many years. And then he can still wear red or like, the. Well, I, I mean, Cardinal, Oriole, Goldfinch. Like, here's a bunch that have like specific colors associated with the G. Yeah. So it like, helps with the color scheme thing. But I, I don't know. There's a little piece of me that's like, eh, this isn't done. Yeah. Like it's not, it, it feels unfinished. First but, pitch of the room, yeah. But my general sense of it, like I, I don't dislike it. I just wish it was maybe it felt a little bit more fleshed out or a little bit more thought through. I guess. Yeah, for but. sure. Uh, oh well, fuck. Uh, oh, 
Oh, it's that time. Oh my god. This I don't like these little short episodes because usually like halfway through a normal episode I can start thinking about it. Right, yeah. But yeah, now yeah. I'm just like, fuck, what what the hell am I gonna do uh, now? Yeah. I don't like this. Uh maybe why don't you explain? So we're into the dial doc segment uh, based on dial H for hero uh, where uh, you get the magic H dial. You type in hero or evil. You become a never before seen hero or villain with a wacky name and crazy powers. And every episode we come up with new additions to this, to the the hero verse. We add add to the hero verse uh, with every episode. And do you have one? I do. You do. Okay. Yes, I do. Uh, Water bear. Water bear. Yeah. I have nothing from this room. I, I was going to say, do you have like a tardigrade? No, no. Um, he was bitten by a by a, a radioactive tardigrade. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. And has the ability to basically do... Does the, whatever a tardigrade can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> basically. Right. Uh, uh, <laughs> Has the ability to uh, a thing I learned the other day about uh, tardigrade is that uh, the reason that they they can survive anything basically is because they basically they create a, like a form of glass around their entire like all their cells, right? And that's how they're able to survive is that they like basically like well, I thought they like desiccated themselves like they, they they like had a way to dry themselves out. They do that, but they also form this sort of glass oh, shit. around okay. themselves, cool. so they can basically like survive in any sort of scenario, right? Um, so that's that's what this person can do. Yeah. Right. So it's not necessarily like an offensive power, but no, they, it's a defensive yeah. power. They can basically just survive anything. Yeah. Um Yeah. Al- uh, almost like uh well, survive anything, not quite in the way that like Darwin from the X Men or whatever. Oh uh, no. Can, but, Different, but yes. Yeah. Nice. Right on. So that's Water Bear. Yeah. Okay. He's uh, also a big Russian dude. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, of course. Well yeah, and he loves to swim. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's just a regular water bear, isn't he? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what do you got? Mine is called Fake Out. Oh. And what Fake Out is able to do he is... comes up with a name, but then Fake Out doesn't actually have one. Fake Out is able to, for like five seconds, put you in a branching timeline where the opposite thing happens. Whoa. So if you're... if like. You're trying to stop fake out and he like goes left and you go left to meet him. He'll put you in that timeline where you stop him for five seconds while he goes the other way. Jeez, so he can get away. And escapes. So basically he has the ability to make these very short, temporary branching timelines and trap you in them Jeez. while he does something else. That's, that's fucking rad. That's fake out. Wow, yeah. that's a good one. Love to hear what your residents can come up with. Send yeah, us yours. Please. Yeah, hashtag dial dog. That's right. Uh, that's it for this week. Uh, yeah, yeah. And don't forget, you can hit us up on all our usual spots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know them. Go oh to go god. to regular episode. Wow, we're really. Oh my god. Yeah, let's just blast through this. You're really yeah blasting. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, finger blast. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, what a dirt bag. Jesus Chow, Christ. Chow chow. Adios. <laughs> This is a Brain Freeze podcast.